people didn't have black horn sections on their songs and things those days. It sounds crazy to say that now, but American radio wouldn't play some of Phil's songs to start with because they white guy with a black horn section, that's not right, you know. That should be R and B music. Everybody should be black, you know, everybody should be white. And it's amazing that only twenty years ago attitudes like that still existed. We didn't know who Phil Collins was as far as the horn section was concerned at all. Uh, there was some inference that he played with a group called Genesis, which didn't mean anything to us neither. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know anything about him at that particular time. He wanted a certain sound. Uh, he wanted that particular sound, and he would get those players. Yeah. And that's how we evolved around it. And so Phil would always give us some challenging things to do, and he would leave me the uh, ability to uh, uh, write at my own discretion and there were certain things that he favored that he would like to hear. So he has an ear also for what, what things should do. Trumpets are cool on the, um, on that, the, the high bit, right? Uh, they turned it around but it just sounded good, you know, as long as it's tight, it'll yeah. work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Long as... 51 again? Yes, that's fine. Tom Tom would just say, Bar 49, bar 49, you know, and then he'd just go like this. It was a very democratic society uh, in the, uh, the recording sessions, whether he liked it or not. And it was like you'd be living on sort of glass, wouldn't you? Yeah. Especially when you weren't quite ready yet <laughs> to record yes. it. Yes. <laughs> What's happening is our punches are very tight. The machine is not fast as me, and neither is you. Hey. <laughs> And then you, you'd say something like, well, I'm not really ready yet. And he'd go into this sort of long thing. Well, now you tell me why you were not able to record it or, or something, you know, and then go off about buying sugar in the supermarket or something. You know, it was like weird. You didn't know what was his, you know. Say down! Face value is a record which has a lot of black influence. And that's also one of the things that made it an international uh, hit. His feelings and his soul are, are expressed in terms uh, very much influenced by black American music. the first time he was making the record that he wanted to make and no one else had any influence on it. It was, uh, it, for him, it was a very exciting experience. Suddenly he had all these toys to play with, you know, um, bringing in the Phoenix horns, and, you know, it, it, suddenly, you know, he could, he could think in terms of, well, let's have a horn section, which had always been an area that had been cut off to him before. most personal song of all from this whole batch of songs, really the most personal song was a song called Please Don't Ask, which was literally all about, you know, bar mentioning names, you know, it was about kids, it was about what was happening, it was about my problems, my, my situation. I mean, I've never really written anything like that since. Enough of me. 
How are you? You look good. Oh, you lost some weight. You see your hair looks nice. You look good. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should try. Don't say it. I know why. So, actually, um, it's kind of a song you could do differently now, but, you know, you could do it as a ballad now, as opposed to a, something else. But it's, that's, that's that stuff, uh, don't say it, I know why, you know, those lyrics, I, I forgot about that bit. But maybe we should try, don't tell me, I know why, you know. It's a, it is a conversation, really. But that's the way a lot of these songs were written, you know, they were written because the communication was at a, a low. So they were written as letters, messages, phone calls that, that had the phone not gone down might have occurred. <laughs> Things like that, you know. Ah! Those are the days. I haven't got a band, you see, I don't have a band. And so we could do a video, okay, well I'll play everything. Well, I'll pretend to play everything. So then you get into the air guitar, saxophone thing. I mean, it was great fun to do. Every character had a different look, and you get kind of uh, the mannerisms of saxophone players and trumpet players, the look, you know, the shades and the, the hat of the trumpet player. You just had fun with it, you know. I mean, that's the most important thing. Oh, yeah, okay. So the working, uh, this was I Miss You Babe, I Really Do. So this was obviously um, early vocals, early, early lyrics. It's funny seeing half your life go, you know, before your eyes. But, um, yeah, it obviously sort of changed from being, which you can sing, I miss you, babe, better than it sounds, I miss you, babe. Doesn't sound very nice when it's said, but I mean, it went from that kind of uh, quite sad lyric, I suppose, to sort of much more ironic, which uh, which is I missed again. <laughs> Looks like I missed again, you know, which is funnier. I felt more comfortable with that, obviously. But the tempo is obviously the, the main thing that changed. I mean, it became it became this Motown, the classic Motown drum fill. Not so much hurt now as more anger <laughs> in the lyrics. 